नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध so today uh, as uh, we, i had mentioned in my announcement we will be doing a uh, sutta which is a uh, kind of a give a uh, gives us a perspective into what is happening uh, 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 what are the uh, kind of uh, instructions buddha is giving to his uh, monks and this is kind of uh, similar to what uh, bante is uh, giving us and it has a certain uh, interesting things in this sutta which uh, is getting revealed so we will be kind of uh, trying to uh, look at that uh, and uh, see how we can uh, kind of gain from that so i'll uh, first open that sutta one second i am trying to open this uh, on the computer and then i will share the sutta is from the angutra nikaya book of 8 and uh, uh, the number is 63 in brief then a certain bikkhu approached the blessed one paid homage to him sat down to one side and said to him so first uh, uh, over here when uh, a bikkhu is mentioned we should always consider them as a practitioner or a student so sometimes i'll be using a, a student sometimes i'll read as bikkhu so th this is for everybody who is doing a practice bante it would be good if the blessed one would teach me the dhamma in brief so that having heard the dhamma from the blessed one i might well alone withdrawn heedful ardent resolute so uh, the student comes and asks uh, that the, uh, he wants instructions for the training so that he can practice and uh, what is the what the buddha is saying is kind of uh, also important it is in just this way that some hollow men here make request of me but when the dhamma has been explained they think only of following me around so what the buddha is telling uh, currently is that uh, when uh, the buddha is giving instruction to some uh, monks this is at, in a later part of the buddha's life where there were a lot of people who were following buddha just because uh, buddha was famous and the buddha was considered an arahant so they wanted to kind of follow a teacher and uh, they were not uh, fully committed to the training so when uh, the instructions are given they would not go on their own and practice but they would uh, uh, keep on following buddha wherever Uh, the buddha was traveling so in the sutras also you will uh, see that there are certain uh, instances where the uh, uh, buddha is mentioned to have traveled with 500 arahants 1250 arahants 1000 arahants so in the, the those uh, monks were already arahants but there were other monks uh, who would follow buddha who had not uh, uh, followed the teaching they were not aryas but they were just uh, uh, attracted uh, uh, towards the buddha as he, he was a teacher so one thing which is a kind of uh, buddha is saying over here is don't be kind of uh, attracted to the teacher but the teaching the teaching is more important and how you do and practice your teaching is important not the teacher teacher uh, buddha, uh, about himself and his body has many time mentioned that his body is full of impurities and this body is impermanent so why should somebody worship his body when uh, a king came and uh, kind of uh, was kissing his feet buddha's feet the buddha said that why do you uh, kind of worship this body which is impermanent and has so many impurities in the body so why uh, why do you uh, see this body as something which has to be which is attractive and which has to be kind of worship but you should look at the dhamma and learn the dhamma the dhamma will when you are following the dhamma it will take you towards uh, awakening it will take you to the release bante let the blessed one teach me the dhamma in brief let the fortunate one teach me the dhamma in brief perhaps i might come to understand the meaning of the blessed 
one statement. Perhaps I might become an heir of the uh, Blessed One's statement. So the monk uh, is kind of pleading, giving his commitment that he would, uh, well, once he understands the teaching, he will do the practice. In that case, Bhikkhu, you should train your mind will be firm and well settled internally. Arisen bad, unwholesome states will not obsess my mind. Thus, should you train yourself. So uh, the Buddha is saying uh, that uh, you should firm and well center, uh, settled internally. Arisen bad, unwholesome states will not obsess my mind. So what you have to uh, uh, recognize is that when a, a unwholesome thought is coming in our mind, is that we don't obsess, means we don't keep our attention on the arisen thought. When we recognize, we release, relax, re-smile, and return. That is what you return back to your object of meditation. But do not put your attention to the arisen, unwholesome thoughts which come. So what, what uh, uh, Buddha is saying is that you can... Uh, is kind of pointing out that uh, the uh, rising of an unwholesome thought may not be in your hand, but uh, keeping your attention on that thought is in your hand. So when uh, you recognize that this, this thought is unwholesome, you release, relax, re-smile, and return to your object of meditation. So I saying that is the first thing uh, the Buddha uh, is giving the advice. When Bhikkhu, your mind is firm and well they do not obsess your mind then you should train yourself thus i will develop and cultivate the liberation of the mind by loving kindness so uh, the first practice the buddha is giving is of metta so this is a uh, advice of the buddha uh, which the buddha is giving for the practice of brahma viharas so we start with loving kindness in the same way which we uh, Bhante Vivaldansi is uh, giving us uh, the instruction. This is the uh, similar to that. Make it a vehicle and basis. Carry it out. Consolidate it. Properly undertake it. Thus should you train yourself. When this concentration has been uh, or the collectedness of mind has been developed and cultivated by you in this way then you should develop this collectedness with thought and examination. Now, uh, uh, you will uh, kind of, uh, this is a indication, thought and examination is there in the first jhana. So when you are in the first jhana, then you have thought and examination. So it is kind of indicating uh, that you are in the first jhana. You should develop it without thought, but with examination only. So uh, when you are in second jhana, there also you can do metta. That is giving an indication of because there is no thoughts, but examination is there. You should develop it without thought and examination. So over here, again, indication of the third jhana. Again, uh, the Buddha is giving uh, in a, another uh, way the same uh, explanation for first, second, and third jhana. You should develop it with rapture. So rapture is there in the first jhana. You should develop it without rapture. So this uh, happens in the uh, second jhana, jhana. You should develop it accompanied by comfort. So this is the comfortable uh, uh, feeling you get in the third jhana. As you uh, know from our previous sutta, uh, readings, uh, it is considered, third jhana is considered the uh, comfortable abiding. So, uh, so this is uh, the indication of that. And you should develop it accompanied by equanimity. Accompanied by equanimity means that you are in the fourth jhana. So uh, uh, the practice of metta has to be developed from the first, second, third, and fourth jhana. You, this practice has to be developed. When this comes, uh, the collectedness has been developed and well developed by you in this way, then you should train yourself thus. I will develop and cultivate the liberation of the mind by compassion. So uh, now from metta uh, to karuna. So uh, the, the, uh, uh, you should develop your mind through karuna. 
the liberation of the mind by altruistic joy that is mudita the liberation of mind by equanimity upekha make it a vehicle and uh, basis carry it out consolidate it properly undertake it thus uh, should you train yourself when this concentration ha has been developed and cultivated by you in this way then you should develop this collectedness with thought and examination you should develop it without thought but with examination only you should develop it without thought and examination you should develop it with rapture you should develop it without rapture you should develop it accompanied by comfort and you should develop it accompanied by equanimity so uh, when you are doing practice uh, you will be able to do the practice of the first jhana second jhana third jhana and fourth jhana so uh, it has been indicated uh, but uh, uh, over here by the states of mind which is there in the jhanas when bhikkhu this uh, collected uh, ness uh, has been developed and well developed by you in this way then you should train yourself thus i will dwell contemplating the body in the body uh, but uh, what uh, bhante vimram ji kind of says is this is not a, a correct kind of a, a translation uh, this is a, a part of the uh, uh, four uh, meditations which the buddha uh, gives so this is uh, a part of that so it is in the same way uh, we, we are saying that uh, this has to be developed uh, by seeing the body as the body when this uh, collected net has been developed and cultivated by you in this way then you should develop this uh, collectedness with thought and examination you should develop it without thought but with examination only you should develop it without thought and examination you should develop it with rapture you should develop it without rapture you should develop it accompanied by comfort and you should develop it accompanied by equanimity so in the same way this uh, practice can also be done uh, in the four jhanas when this collectedness has been developed and well developed by you in this way then you should train yourself thus i will uh, dwell contemplating feeling as feelings mind as mind and phenomena as phenomena phenomena is sankhara or you can say thoughts as thoughts uh, that is kind of a, a way of looking at sankhara because th those are also uh, 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 thoughts are also a phenomena which is uh, a, a, a result of the mind uh, uh, so this is considered to be a way of uh, explaining sankhara but shankara is a kind of a deep subject so there are many ways uh, one can explain a shankara but one of the way is phenomena and other is thought ardent clearly comprehending mindful having removed longing and dejection in regard to this world thus you should train when this constant uh, collectedness has been developed and cultivated by in this way then you should develop this uh, collect, uh, uh, collectedness with thought and examination you should develop it without thought but with examination only you should develop it without thought and examination you should develop it with rapture you should develop it without rapture you should develop it accompanied by comfort and you should develop it accompanied by equanimity so you see that uh, over here the buddha is uh, again and again kind of underlying the fact that uh, the practice which you are doing can be done in all the four jhanas so when you are doing your meditation it uh, starts out uh, that you try and uh, calm your mind when you calm your mind you uh, uh, enter the first jhana then uh, you progress to the second jhana third jhana and fourth jhana and after in the fourth jhana there are four Uh, arupa jhanas which you can uh, uh, progress to one uh, the first one is infinite uh, space then infinite consciousness then nothingness and then neither perception nor non perception in this way a, a practitioner or a student uh, progresses when bhikkhu this uh, collectedness has been developed and well developed by you in this way then wherever you walk you will walk in at ease 
wherever you stand you will stand at ease wherever you sit you will sit at ease wherever you lie down you will lie down at ease so uh, the buddha is kind of pointing out that when you are doing the practice correctly when you are doing the practice in a way which the buddha has prescribed then there will be ease in any state uh, you are there so if you are there uh, lying down you will be uh, 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 calm uh, you will be at ease and when you are uh, sitting you will be at ease when you are standing you will be at ease when you are walking you will be at ease so at any position which you are there you will be at ease having re received such exhortation from the blessed one the bhikkhu rose from his seat paid homage to the blessed one circumambulated him keeping the right side towards him and departed the, so uh, the uh, the bhikkhu once he had uh, got the instructions paid homage to the uh, the buddha and then he left then dwelling alone withdrawn heedful ardent and resolute in no long time that bhikkhu realized for himself with direct knowledge in this very life that unsurpassed consummation of the spiritual life for the sake of which clansmen rightly go forth from the household life into homelessness and having entered upon it he dwelt in it he directly knew destroyed is birth the spiritual life has been lived what had to be done uh, what had to be done has been done there is no more coming back to any state of being and that bhikkhu become one of the other arhans so the bhikkhu uh, uh, kept his word when the instructions were given he followed the instructions he went uh, in a seclusion and practice and then he became a arahant so in this way this is giving you an encouragement that uh, the practice which you are giving when uh, you are following the practice the practice uh, can be followed without uh, the teacher being present but the dhamma the teaching has to be present with you that is that you have to uh, keep the teaching in mind and Uh, follow the teaching when you are doing the teaching uh, as per the instructions uh, which the buddha is giving then for sure you will have progress in your practice because the practice is linked to the effort which you are putting not because of the teacher the teacher uh, 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 should not be kind of followed or uh, revered in the manner of uh, some uh, uh, person who is kind of uh giving something uh, of uh, wisdom the wisdom is developed by your own practice the wisdom is not uh, coming out of the word i am not sure what happened i am not sure what happened uh, just now something um, uh, maybe because uh, the connection is not uh, always uh, steady something ha happened over here but anyways i'll uh, read it once again a reason bad un uh, unwholesome states will not obsess my mind thus uh, you should uh, you train yourself so what the buddha is saying that if the arisen unwholesome state of mind is there you uh recognize and release that uh, thought by recognizing and releasing that thought you uh, have to uh, go through the wholesome uh, thought that uh, you have to release that tension which is uh, uh, there in your head area 
you release it, you re-smile, you bring something wholesome and you go back to your object of meditation. So that is the basic instruction of the uh, Buddha about uh, the first instruction that Buddha is giving is very similar to the six sar which Bhante Vibharamsi is teaching. So you uh, can uh, understand from this training that uh, Brahma Viharas were a, a training which was uh, taught by the uh, Buddha. Second, which you uh, know is Brahma uh, is linked to the four jhanas. And uh, the training which is uh, given is given basis of the instruction. That is the reason the uh, Bhante Vimal Ramsi says that he is not the teacher, but he, you are yourself your teachers. We are guides. We will kind of give instructions. So the Buddha is also saying to the student over here that I can only give instructions. Don't hang around me because hanging around the teacher is not going to kind of give you anything extra. But remembering the teaching and following the teaching as uh, the Buddha has uh, intended, that is, the, uh, that is when you are getting benefit. So this is the end of the sutta. So now uh, tell us, uh, tell me any questions if you have related to the sutta, then I can answer. Yes, Samaji. The main intention of uh, this sutta ah. is only speaking about a uh, variety of jhanas with the concentration and the removal of uh, thought and the thinking, all, all these uh, jhana one, jhana two, confusing mm -hmm. the listener. Yes. Yes. The, after coming to Brahma Vihara, yeah. jhana as a as one of the ways of dealing with the hindrances and attaining tranquility and uh, awareness tranquility of awareness and other uh, progress uh, progress uh, is correct but today when you are speaking about uh, this jhana factors it is only confusion first jhana second jhana and second jhana third jhana all this and finally you concluded yeah. you, are not a, you are not a teacher, you are a guide. See, uh, what uh, we are saying is that uh, the Buddha when he is teaching, sometimes he is giving an indication of what he is teaching. So when uh, over here uh, it is mentioned as, uh, I'll, I'll repeat what is uh, said over here. So that, that kind of give, gives you an indication. So uh, he said, when this uh, collectedness has been developed and cultivated by you in this way, that is first you have to calm your mind down. Okay. okay. So that is six R, which is saying that you should not pay attention to the unwholesome. Unwholesome. That, okay. Uh, One way of uh, avoiding the so, uh, hindrances. Uh, yeah. When this uh, collectedness has been developed and cultivated by you in this way, then you should develop this collectedness with thought and examination. Now, you know that in the first jhana, what is there? Thought and examination is there? Yes. First so, jhana, all, uh, all of them are there. All the five factors are there. Yes. So over here, it is a giving an indication that uh, when thought and examination is there, that time mm -hmm. also you uh, continue doing your practice. Uh, that in this case, it is sending metta to all uh, beings. Okay. Or okay. uh, sending metta to your uh, spiritual friend as uh, when you are there in the practice. You okay. should develop it without thought, but with examination. So hmm. now in this, uh, uh, it is giving an indication of the second jhana when thought uh, uh, is not there. So hmm. it is giving an indication uh, about that. Okay, you should develop it uh, without thought and examination. In the second, in the second jhana, without thought and examination. Examination. Okay. That means uh, doership is uh, going away. Yes. Mm. Okay. Then mm. uh, over here also in rapture, he saying you should develop it with, with rapture. When mm. you are in first genre, you are in uh, you have rapture. 
Yes. You should develop without rapture. When the mm. second jhana is there, mm. then second uh, then jhana rapture, rapture also will be there. To be frank, rapture okay. rapture will be there. Uh-huh. All the so four factors is... are there in the four, for second jhana. As per as per the suttas, or even our Brahma Vihara, we are not trained like this. Yeah, it is a kind of uh, a, a kind of a, a indication which is giving. Uh, about that okay so mm-hmm. now you see that uh, uh, he says you should develop it accompanied by comfort now what is there in comfort comfort is a, a place that you are uh, pe- feeling comfortable the third jhana explanation how it is given that it is a pleasant abiding mm. okay okay so now uh, the, what is the uh, indication of the fourth jhana you should uh, develop it accompanied by equanimity but equanimity is there in all jhanas okay Equanimity so, uh, is there in all jhanas. Yeah, in um, uh, if you consider uh, uh, MN uh, 111, 111. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. But uh, what is the uh, kind of uh, mark marking factor? Insight is, is insight uh, is there, jhanas. but equanimity may not be there. I I think so. Insight is there no, in all the jhanas uh, as per Anupada Sutta. Yeah, yeah, Anupada Sutta. Not the equanimity. You, you can go and see equanimity is there in all the jhanas. Uh, which has been no, no. given. One, uh, please, please give me clarification. Yeah. In our tranquility, uh, uh, tra- uh, 111 uh, Anubada Sutta, uh, if you go and see, uh, it, it, equanimity is mentioned in all the jhanas. But equanimity is a, in, uh, over here, it is highlighted in fourth jhana because that is the, uh, that is what we say that uh, equanimity is of one legged in the first jhana. Second uh, jhana, it is like a two-legged equanimity. Third jhana, it is like a three-legged equanimity. And fourth jhana, it is like a four-legged equanimity, which is very stable. So that is also uh, the teaching which the Buddha, I mean, uh, Buddha is giving. And even uh, this is clarified by Bhante and Sister Kema when she is giving this sutta, MN uh, 111, 111. But she clarified. Yeah. Samatha and Vipassana yoke together and they are there from the first jhana onwards. Yes. But uh, yes. first time I am hearing this equanimity is also there. You must not have noticed Next. it. You can, you can go and uh, uh, like uh, look at that. Uh, if, if it is possible, I just go to, if I have Majjhimanika in uh, this thing, mm-hmm. I'll just go and I will uh, try and read it, okay? I have to uh, find that uh, sutta. One second, I'm just going, okay, over here, table of contents. 111, okay, Anupada Sutta. And the states in the first jhana, the applied thought, the sustained thought, the rapture, the pleasure, and the unification of mind, the contact, feeling, perception, volition, and mind, the zeal, decision, energy, mindfulness, equanimity, mm-hmm. and attention. See, the first jhana also does mention equanimity. It is uh, 111.4, MN 111. Something, you can something go because of this, because uh, of this sutta, we got confused. And first jhana, second jhana, examination and uh, thought and uh, removal of thought and uh, examination. Just in the indication. Second jhana. Uh, so the four uh, fold, four fold jhana to five fold, five fold jhana to something else. <laughs> it's all connected to absorptions uh, or uh, yeah, concentrations of uh, one pointedness. <laughs> this is uh, no. This are this is just giving an indication of how you have to develop your practice. So this is giving an indication of how you are developing your practice through uh, each state of uh, the jhanas where you are developing your practice. Uh, When you are in first jhana or second jhana or third jhana or fourth jhana, you can continue developing your practice. And uh, this is kind of a very uh, simple way of uh, explaining, but uh, the Buddha is giving a a kind of uh, indication of the uh, okay. mind states over here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>
Any other questions? Anybody else has a question about uh, or any other questions also related to meditation or uh, any other uh, related questions? Not just towards this thing. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> so um, I just very, very quickly read it um, while you were talking because I, uh, I'd missed you, you speaking and I'm, I'm yeah. sorry for that. No but what, what, one thing I wanted to ask here is, um, yeah, in verse five, it talks about contemplating the body and the body. And then in verses six to eight, it talks about contemplating feelings in feelings, mind in mind, phenomena and phenomena. Yeah. And, and I, I, I understand that, that, that sequence. Um, I just body wondered if- Body and the body, that is what one day we will I think that was I couldn't quite hear that. I wanted to hear what you might have to say about the 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 body and the body and then and then the development through four foundations of mindfulness that those are See, Bhante Vimalansi explains it as body as body. So you are when you are uh, uh, in meditation you just have an awareness of the body as just it is a body. So, mm -hmm. it, uh, so there is uh, the, uh, the translation are uh, sometimes uh, given in a different manner. In Bhikkhu Bodhi also has changed his translation in some of the places from body in body uh, to body as body. Mm -hmm. So when you are looking at the body, you are just looking at the body as it is a body. You are not giving a, uh, uh, you are not a kind of, you are contemplating without any kind of uh, perception. So if there is a feeling, you just recognize it as a feeling. And uh, if there is a, uh, the mind, uh, you recognize it just as a mind. If there are uh, thoughts or uh, phenomena, those are recognized just as thoughts. So those are the way of uh, the four uh, basic uh, foundations of uh, mindfulness. So those are uh, given as uh, uh, training uh, objects. Uh, so this is not our, uh, what we are teaching, but we are mm -hmm. uh, kind of teaching the Brahma Viharas, which is the previously, uh, which was mentioned. Okay, uh, I think uh, I am being uh, thrown out uh, of the meeting. I was not uh, uh, visible maybe for some time. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this network uh, is giving me a problem. Anyways, I changed the network. I, I brought in a new network to see if it works uh, better. But uh, unfortunately, uh, this is also kind of giving me trouble. So anyway, so what I was uh, talking about that Brahma Viharas uh, are the uh, main uh, teaching which we are giving. Mm -hmm. So uh, it uh, automatically develops uh, in, uh, in the way which we are uh, Bhante Vimalamsi is teaching from Metta to uh, Karuna to Mudita to Upekha. So it uh, develops in this way. So uh, over here also the Buddha is uh, giving instructions so uh, that is what I kind of want to highlight that the Buddha is also giving instructions in this same manner. So most of the uh, times uh, what happens is that uh, when we are uh, going through the instructions in the suttas, there are different ways uh, the Buddha is teaching to different uh, students because there are different uh, way uh, of uh, uh, absorbing the information. So here the student had a, a tendency to kind of hang around the Buddha. Uh, and uh, as per the uh, commentary notes. Uh, uh, and that is the reason the Buddha starts out with uh, kind of admonishing him that uh, if I give you the instructions, you don't hang around over here, but go and practice. And it is also kind of giving an indication of, uh, this sutta is giving an indication of the uh, importance of the teaching 
rather than the teacher. Mm -hmm. So uh, when uh, the teaching has been given, you have to kind of follow the teaching rather than kind of look up to the teacher and uh, uh, follow the teacher. Uh, because what happens is that uh, whatever insights which you gain, you gain when you are doing your meditation. When you are sitting in a meditation and when you are uh, doing your uh, meditation, that is when you develop your insights. The six hours are important uh, because uh, unwholesome thoughts comes. What is unwholesome and wholesome is also given in Majjhimarika uh, 19. That uh, Buddha kind of uh, splits all thoughts into two categories. One is which takes him towards the goal and the other thought is which is taking him away from the goal uh, of uh, awakening. So whatever thoughts are not uh, helping him uh, towards his uh, goal, then what he says is those are unwholesome. And what is? Which sutta? Is, huh? Which sutta? Uh, Majjima Nikaya 19, 1-9. One 1-9 nine. One nine or 9? Nine. 9 Samma? No, no, 1-9. One 1-9 nine. Okay. Uh, nine is uh, Dveda Vitaka uh, Sutta, I think so. Two, uh, two kinds of thoughts. So in this way, uh, you recognize the unwholesome, you release it, relax, re-smile, and return back to your object of meditation. When you are doing this practice, that is when you can gain insight. It is not uh, insight uh, 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 something like uh, in certain traditions or uh, certain uh, places where the teacher has been given a, a predominant importance. Over here, the the teaching has been given the predominant in, uh, importance mm -hmm. because the insights are generated on the uh, individual's uh, practice. So that is what uh, kind of it is underlying this fact. So there are uh, one or two things which I like about a sutta that is uh, when I kind of share this, there are kind of points over there uh, which I kind of uh, like uh, when reading the sutta. So then I share those suttas. So those are uh, not our regular suttas which are taking for training, but the, those are suttas which will have one point or two points which will be kind of interesting. So like uh, the four foundations, we are not uh, teaching that, but it is a part of this sutta, mm. something like that. Okay, agreed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? When we are going for examination and thought and all those factors uh, when you are speaking, somewhat a slight confusion comes to us. That is the drawback. <laughs> that confusion unnecessarily in Brahma yeah, see, uh, the, Those are uh, not the way which uh, we are uh, generally teaching because we, uh, as Bhagavad Gita see, does not want to kind of uh, go into details of your uh, Brahma Vihara. When we are doing, you are going through that stage, and when we are doing the question answers, at that time uh, we kind of recognize uh, the Buddha, uh, the Bhante, uh, kind of uh, teaches us to recognize what is the. Uh, uh, state the, uh, the student is in, but we don't discuss this because it is kind of very confusing. Sometimes what because happens the is there is too much uh, kind of uh, uh, talk which happens internal talk about what where I am, what I am doing. Did, did this did this happen? This is the, did not happen. Is that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, object of meditation. The object of meditation also doesn't change for the first uh, four. Yes, sir. Four jhanas in Brahma Vihara. You are, you are, we are not able Four to listen jana. properly. Huh? Correct. Okay. Please, Hari, uh, let us uh, leave it. No, uh, I, am, I, I can hear you. Uh. Uh, so the object does not change, but uh, 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 only, we are not uh, concerned with all. In the four uh. jhana, Hmm. And uh, you are uh, feeling unnecessarily when you are speaking, uh, and when the, when the sutta is speaking and about the examination and thought, uh, so and, other, and other factors, unnecessarily we get confused. Okay, thank you.
<laughs> no, no, that is just saying that even in whatever state you are there, you continue practice till you uh, go ahead. And then there are other sutras also I have read that which says that when you develop one, uh, the second thing automatically gets developed. Uh, the sister Kima is also showing charts about the uh, flow of water, you know. It goes from one pot to another pot to another pot to another pot. When the first is filled, the second uh, starts. When the second gets filled, third starts. Third gets filled, the fourth starts. In this way, you progress in your practice. Okay. So, any other questions? Anybody else? Okay, then. Uh, so, we will end this now with the sharing of merit. May suffering once be suffering free, and the fears shut fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth Devas and Nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.